Hey, my name is Fran. I'm here at my house in front of my fireplace, which I've decided to fix myself and make a video of because I couldn't find a good YouTube video that taught me how to replace the thermocoupler on my fireplace pilot online already. Uh, I've called some uh, service people. They came out, they did some tinkering with it. They blew some air into it. They tried to sandpaper it and they said it was fixed. And of course it wasn't. And they charged me like $200 for that. So instead I bought a coupler online um, for I think $29 and I'm told they're universal. So I'm gonna give this a try. Okay, I'm getting ready to remove these logs to get back in there and take a look at the pile. Oh, I got a pair of gloves here because there's a lot of black soot on the logs. I'm gonna take a few of them out one by one. And then I'm gonna to try to lift the whole grate out next. That wasn't terribly hard. Um, I took off a couple pieces of logs on the right. I was on my knees and I was able to lift them up and pull it, pull the whole grate outside of the fireplace cavity. And this is what's left. And right over here, of course, you can see the pilot. It looks, I guess, a little bit dirty, but I'll turn it on in a second to show you how it doesn't stay on. Okay. So I turned the uh, gas back on and I'm gonna push this to the pilot light, okay? That's kind of in the middle. I'm gonna put my camera over here and focus on the pilot over there while I try to ignite it, all right? And to do that, you gotta come over here to the right again. So I tried to light the pilot and in contrast to last week when I was playing with this, it won't even stay lit for a second. Okay, so maybe it's really dead. I've turned the gas back off. I'm getting ready to take it off. And to take it off, it's not terribly hard. There's just two screws back here, very loosely put on. And you're gonna require a flat head screwdriver and that's it. So I'm gonna, see this one comes off by itself. This one's a bit tighter. I'm gonna have to get my screwdriver. So here's the screwdriver and it's a little bit too big for this area, but it should work. I think it's kind of stripped. Okay, since mine was stripped, uh, it was, actually it wasn't stripped, but the, the flathead screw was very difficult to get a hold of. So instead I used it this little ratchet to get it off. And it worked out fine. Now that the screws are removed and it comes off pretty easily, I just need to get a small 7 16th open face wrench to remove it from this piece over here, which I believe is basically kind of the pilot box. That comes off very easily. The gas is turned off by the way, oops. Looks like I need a smaller wrench for the back one here, which controls the gas. Pause. Okay, I'm back again. On the one I bought, it just requires one wrench, 7 16th, but on this one that's in here installed, it does require a smaller one, which is 3 8 And that comes off very easily too. That's done. And now I gotta replace this with the new one. Which is the one I bought, I think on Amazon. And I was told, because I talked to a number of different people, that rather than try to search for the one that goes with this particular model, that these are largely universal. So we're gonna see if this works. Okay, I've attached the both, both the fittings and I hand tightened it and I want to make sure they're tight. I'm sure it's not going to be a problem. I obviously don't want any leakages here with gas. So just a couple of good turns without stripping it, of course. And there you have it. Okay, so it's attached. Now I'm going to just go ahead and attach it to the back. Okay, now I'm in the back again, reattaching the thermal coupler to the back of my gas burner. And I'm using this ratchet instead because it's much easier than the flathead screw driver that I used. 
top one is pretty tight. The last time I took the bottom one out, it was pretty easy. And I don't think they have to be like, you know, really tight and, you know, secure, but they need to be kind of immobile so that they don't move up and down or left and right. All right, so the gas is on into the burner here. I go over here, I turn this on to the pilot light area. All right, and then, you know, you have to push this crazy thing in and hold it while you turn this on. Just adjust this a bit. Look at that. In contrast to the old one I just replaced, this one lights up really fast. They say you're supposed to hold it for 30 seconds. But look at that. This one's working perfectly with just 10 seconds to go, okay? So I was able to do this really pretty quickly. I think I was more afraid of doing it than it really was. It was easy to do. Um, now I'll, I'm gonna clean this whole thing up because I haven't done this since we bought the house. This is about seven years old. So my plan is to go ahead and replace a lot of the stuff here and put some new stuff in. I'm not gonna show you how I do that in the video, but I will come back and just make sure that the whole thing lights up. Thanks, bye. So now um, the thermocouple has been replaced. Everything seemed like it was working. The pilot light was working. I cleaned up and washed all my logs. I brought new lava rocks and I brought some new Tyndall, I guess it's called or whatever from Amazon. All this stuff came from Amazon. Uh, I had a map that I downloaded from the manufacturer of the logs that told me how to put the logs back together again. And uh, hopefully now that it's all put together again and all cleaned up, my remote control should work. The pilot light I know is on and if you can see it, it's just barely back there. It's been on since I fixed it and it's working really well. Now I'm gonna turn it on and see what happens. I can hear it motor going, I can hear it clicking. And there you go. All right. So like I said, the last time I tried to get this done by a service guy, he came out, he charged me $200. He replaced the batteries on my remote, which was $10 to do that. He said he fixed the pilot light. He said he just cleaned it up. And of course that only worked for about a day or two. I tried to clean it up again after that with no luck. And instead I went online, I called a lot of people, didn't find a YouTube thing. So I made this YouTube here and I bought a replacement thermocoupler uh, on Amazon. And um, basically I was told by a lot of people I spoke to, there's universal thermocouplers. And I hopefully hope this one lasts for a long, long time because they seem to go out on me almost every year. Thank you. Bye.